morning it is tuesday about 11 o'clock i kind of overslept put out a late video last night about all that treasure map and uh, other options but i did forget to put another one so i'm going to cover that in the video today all right guys so the other option that you have instead of just phone apps and um using uh your phone period in a quarter of a mile turn left on nasa bypass all right i'm using an app called waze if you haven't heard of waze w-a-z-e that is a great app for you to put on your phone um have you been using them for a while not just to locate and um, plug in addresses to go to sales uh, it navigates you around any potential traffic and takes you there the absolute fastest way but it also if you're on the freeway and you want to fly and go like 90 miles an hour down the 10 because i'm in houston and usually i go to new orleans and the golden nugget and all that to gamble back when the virus wasn't around uh, i could go like 90 95 because the way uh, ways works is all the users can pinpoint wherever the cops are along the freeways and then your phone literally will yell at you and say hey there's a cop coming up and then obviously you slow down you'll see a cop and then you speed back up so it's a really good uh, app to use not only for finding garage sales when you have the address but for other reasons um, but the website I wanted to tell you about and a lot of y'all already know but if you don't know you should consider using it it's not an app you just get on your phone um, and type into your uh, search engine or whatever it's called estatesales.net and literally i just looked up one today in fact i'll do some screenshots of what i just saw people are posting on there and um instead of using apps or whatever they'll use estatesales.net in fact i know uh one of our good friends in the area her company um you know denise she's been in a few videos i think her company actually uses estatesales.net to advertise their sales um so uh you go there usually i would go the night or two before because they're pretty active about listing there and you can filter by days so you can see which ones are happening on what days and then another thing that i do and i highly recommend is there is a feature where you could see if the listing was done by a company, like a professional company that's running the estate sale, or if it's a privately listed. That's the key word, privately listed. So what does that tell you? That it's not a professional company running the sale. It's probably the family members, the son and daughter maybe, that um, had a family member pass away and they're running the estate sale and they chose to In do one themselves. mile, keep left to I-45 North, Instead Houston. of having um, you know, someone else do it for them and pay a commission or pay a percentage of the sales. Um, so that's something that I usually look for too because not only is it not privately ran, but a lot of times family members don't know versus the professionals what certain things are worth. So you get deals that way too. So I am literally on my way to one that I In half a mile, use the left two lanes to keep left. And I think it's gonna be a pretty good one. It's a one day only sale. And they advertise that they're making deals and it's privately listed. So I'm gonna stick in, I'm going at the tail end of the sale, which sometimes is a good time to go, but also you missed a lot. Um, but eh, we'll see what happens in an hour. Uh, I'll try to film there. And um, if not, I'll do a haul at the end. Wish me luck. Thanks guys, take care. Wow guys, I'm kind of excited. I just got here. Uh, it was about a 10 minute drive. It's kind of in an older neighborhood. So I'll kind of show you the houses, like a lot of one stories, but there's hardly anybody here and it's still going on. They don't have any signs on the road or anything. They just probably put it on estatesales.net and a lot of people don't know about it. So I am thinking I'm gonna do pretty good. I'm gonna try to film in there. If not, I'll be doing a, um, a, lot, a haul at the end, but if I find anything really good, I'll kind of sneak a video of it. All right, guys, wish me luck. All right, guys, so I didn't get a chance to video because this place was chaotic, but this place really panned out. This is my pile of everything, and I'm gonna do a um, a haul video on it because I, if I would have videoed, I would have taken more time, and um, they were closing in like 30 minutes, so I had to go. But this is the big score. PC bot 914. Dude, I'll show you the comps on this. This is my big buy. And I got a bunch of 
Babylon VHS. That's another PC sets of Babylon. Look at those comps. And I got a bunch of Highlander season sets on VHS. Check those out. Obviously, I'll go through every. Now, I missed out on all this. There was a guy just like me that came before. And look at this. He scored all those VHS. Some other electronics. Some vintage plush. Got a bunch of cool posters that are vintage. I'll show you everything. All right. I'll kind of give you a quick tour of everything. That way you can see what kind of sale. Anytime you see carpet, you know you're in a vintage house. Look. I looked at for all the vintage. I looked for the the optical mice, the rollerball mice. Didn't find any. Hey, this is what I was doing. I did get some. Sorry, I'm going too fast. I need to slow down here. But I'm in a rush, so bear with me, guys. Look at these vintage calculators. Sometimes I think calculators can be some old calculators. Yeah, maybe I should look at these. Obama. Alright. Casio. Casio. Casio 7000G. Is that the same one? I don't know. No. FX. Some of these old school calculators, there's collectors on these type of things. That one has a burnt screen. I don't know what this is. That one catches my eye. Oh man, I wish I had more time at this sale. A lot of money to be made. What is that? I already got a couple Olympic, vintage Olympic posters. What is this? Oh, it's a calendar. Never mind. See all this. So since I bought the robot for 400, she gave me a deal on everything here. So I will show you. Which is plush. I'm gonna obviously spread it all out, but let y'all know. Everything here though, I paid a hundred bucks for. And when you see some of this stuff, you're gonna understand why. Great deal. Look at this. That's a, that's a silk screen. Vintage silk screen. Somebody that's into skiing or to hang on their man cave or something. All right, y'all, so here's my big score. I'm carrying out to the car now. White Box Robotics, PC Bot 914, extremely rare. I paid $400 for this thing. But sometimes you gotta pay up to make some money. And it looks like it's in great condition. Pretty excited, guys. And I'll show you some more. But this I wanted to show you solo. Is that one, so it's a very rare piece. This guy was an engineer of some sort, and there were people watching this thing, and some people that wanted to try to lowball him, they said. But I paid 400 to just steal. Babylon 5. Some of them are even sealed there. Whole ton of them. Here's another one. So I'll show the comps on the screen. Another VHS set to keep an eye out for at sales. A lot of people just overlook them because they think VHS is old school. There's nobody that wants to watch them, play them, etc. Then on the other side, I get some new sealed vintage. I don't know what year this is. Some sort of space thing. War of the Worlds, old school from, what year is this? I don't even know. It doesn't even say 1952, copyright. And then 1980, sealed. Here's another Highlander. I'll throw that with a lot. Here's a vintage Star Trek. Uh, st uh, some sort of vintage Motorola thing. Took a gamble on it. Cybergenics VHS. 
I didn't know what this was, a Beyond something, but some of these specialized VHSs that you don't find very often could be worth a lot of money. And then obviously a VCR cleaning kit, those are easy 10 bucks all day. Well guys, I got my work out there because I was in a race to get out. She had to leave and be there somewhere for a meeting at two o'clock and it's like 1.50. And she even started helping me carry out stuff because she saw how long and it was taking me and everything else. But wow, uh, Ray, nice to meet you. Thanks a lot for the deal that you gave me. I bought a robot for 400 and she gave me a, a bulk discount and a deal for everything else on the pile. And I ended up spending $505 for everything that I got. Um, I'll show you the comps. I, I couldn't uh, keep filming uh, the lots as I was carrying it out because we kind of got in a rush. Um, but I did want to plug her business that does the reselling locally here in the Houston area. Um, her name is Ray Meekins and her business is called Collective home mercantile and so if you are in the Houston area and you're looking for somebody that has a good following and um, people show up to her sales and she she I mean she prices things accordingly to help the homeowners get as much as they can but she also gets permission to do discounts on like the last day and give bundle discounts and it's kind of what I fell into I believe uh, where I fell into the last day or last hour I should say and um, she was able to work with me on price. So really happy I stopped by. Um, it was one of those deals where I was making a video about uh, the yard sale treasure map being kind of uh, down in dumps lately and I was doing the estatesales.net and sure enough, popped up. It was a one day only sale today, which is unique because it's a Tuesday of all time, all days. Usually it's Thursdays through Sundays, right? So Tuesdays are a rare one. I expected there to be a lot of people. Fortunately for me, there wasn't. And I was able to walk around and find a lot of good things. So Ray, thanks again. Um, I'm gonna be showing a haul on all of these. Robot, all the vintage posters, uh, more VHS, some other cool, unique items. I even have some NASA stuff in there. So really excited. Hope you all enjoyed some things uh, on this video and you uh, get some bolos out of it on the following content I'm about to show you. All right, y'all, I'm back at my storage. And as I mentioned in the car, I didn't have time to go through everything while I was there because she was trying to get out of there by two o'clock and I completely understand that and I would have taken longer if I would have itemized each thing as I put it in the car and did screenshots and comps. So um, I already mentioned a couple things but I'll go through my complete haul now so you can kind of see what I got, why I got it. Okay, so as I've already told you all in the past, if I ever go to like a vintage estate sale, like here's my whole lot here, but I always will go in a closet and I will look for single stitch vintage t-shirts. So when I say single stitch, I'm trying to zoom in here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You see how there's only one row on the stitching? And instead of it being two rows, like a railroad tracks, one row is single stitch. So, Vintage, try to, U of H Cougar single stitch. I don't know what this Outpost 2 is, but it's double sided and it looks like it might be something where it might be video game related or some sort of, I don't know. That single stitch, vintage Taekwondo, whatever the finish open was. It's got a back and front. And then this was brand new with tags and it's got the Celtic Irish. So I knew that one was meant for me. And it's an extra large with a single stitch, so that one was pretty exciting. Uh, now, this was my biggest score of the day, and I already kind of showed the video on it. Um, I ran the comps on Worth Point, and there was a sold for $1,600. So, that was a no-brainer for me. I paid $400 for it. I'm going to see if I can find a cord. Um, it didn't really come with any operation manuals or anything like that, but... I'm thinking just for parts only, it was worth more than what I paid. So, um, took a little bit of a gamble, but I'm sure it's gonna pay off. Highlander, this is a big freaking lot of VHS Highlanders. Um, they used to be worth a lot more. Now they kind of slowed down as far as sales, but for the right buyer, I'm thinking I'll get probably at least 50 to $75 for this entire lot and it'll be easy because it's media mail so I can ship that no problem.
Uh, vintage Snoopy plush and uh, tag on the back. Probably get about 10 bucks on that thing. Now here's another bolo item that y'all should know about. So don't pass up necessarily VHSs. I know I already mentioned the like wrestling and horror uh, that can go for a lot, but this right here, Babylon 5. There'll be some comps that I show on the screen on this for sure, but a big lot like this is gonna go for at least 100 bucks, if not more. Um, here's some other vintage like VHS tapes. If I ever see them new sealed that are vintage, that's an easy one for me. Star Trek. Some of the unique ones too that you've never seen before. Sometimes those are collectible. And cleaning kits, War of the World sealed. Um, vintage like Trapper Keeper. Surprisingly enough, there's people that are collecting old nostalgia Trapper Keeper things. Um, computer games. Anytime I see old PC games, and these are just just like in a sleeve, but I'm thinking I can lot these together, and there are some people that collect these surprisingly. So I'll lot those together and get probably I'm guessing at least fifty bucks. Uh, this old calculator. It's like an old school graphing calculator by Casio. I looked up the comps. That one's worth like twenty five, thirty bucks. This right here was pretty cool pickup. It looked like it was never used in the box. And I ran the comps on it. They were anywhere from 100 to like 160 bucks, something like that. So it looks like the plastic's still there. Everything looks really good. So probably a new open box listing on that thing. And I'll show the comps on that, VMAX Flex. Bunch of old gaming PC books. Sometimes, sometimes those can be worth a lot on the instruction manuals. Anytime I see something old that's sealed, I'll pick it up if the price is right. I looked it up, it's only worth about 20 bucks. Now this is what we call big box PC games. And why is it called big box? Because look at the size of it. That's a big ass box, right? It's not like a small cartridge game or something. And this one was obviously brand new sealed and it's dated like 96. Uh, all these, this one was also sealed. So whenever I see those, I didn't even bother running the comps because I know that her prices were right. And I probably paid a dollar each for those things and they're worth about minimum 15, $20. I don't think I'll lot those up. I'll probably sell them individually. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, Panasonic tape recorder. Some vintage ashtrays. This one happened to be for the Astrodome. Anything Astrodome related sometimes with uh, the whole Travis Scott thing is pretty popular. Some vintage ashtrays. So Kevin, if you're watching at Commonwealth, you're probably getting a kick out of this. Strike It Rich, Golden Nugget, Vintage, Nevada's Fun Capital. This one was kind of a blue one. Overland Hotel Casino. Know, some of those could be rare. Anytime I see NASA type things, this is like a salt and paper shaker set. Got that. This, I don't know what this was, but this is Marine Band and it's like a harmonica. So I don't know, I'll have to look up the name brand on this. M. Honer. Some of these could be worth a lot of money. And someone that happened to be in the Marines might like that. Um, for some reason, I thought that maybe this was worth a nostalgia type thing. Old school cell phone. Look at that. That's like when they first came out, like a brick, right? Came with the charger and the manual and everything else. So there's collectors out there for old school electronics that want to relive the glory days. So I'm thinking that that was a good pickup.
Now this guy was an engineer that happened to be into Taekwondo and he had all these like hanging on his wall. And I'm thinking that I'll lot this up and like that one's missing the coin, but look at these. Like someone that has their own gym or home gym, I guess, could hang that on the wall for decor. Thought it was pretty cool. This I'm pretty excited about. Anytime I see name brand, like Craftsman Tools, and if it's vintage, which obviously it is, um, there's collectors out there. And they'll put that on their wall in their shop and display it. And I've sold a few for like 30, 40 bucks. And they're pretty easy to ship, even though they're kind of long and skinny, but you can use the USPS tubes, the same tubes that you use to ship golf clubs with or bats with, and not a problem. I'll come, I'll come to those posters later on in just a second. Um, these are all yearbooks, old vintage yearbooks from like, this one's 53, 51. What, this one's 34, I don't know what that one is. 50, 51 again, Houstonian. They're kind of a long tail sale. Like you have to find someone that either had a relative or happened to be um, going to the school for this year's um, or they lost it during like a flood or some sort of accidental throwaway. But um, when you do sell them, they sell for 20, 30 bucks. It's just a matter of keeping them uh, on your shelf. This was kind of neat. I thought someone that was into skiing, I don't know if you could see it, but it's a, it's a silk screen. So like an advertising silk screen for someone that was a ski instructor. I thought that was pretty cool. So I don't know. This I ran the comps on. I didn't notice that it had the brakes when I bought it, but still old dot matrix printer. And it did turn on when I tested it. So uh, some of the comps I sold were like 50 to $80. And for the price that I paid, I figured I would at least try it. Uh, Bibles, I always look for really neat looking Bibles. Some of them I've sold for in the past up to a hundred bucks on some vintage Bibles, so I always um, keep an eye out for that. Some sort of book that I happened to see, and the, the date was really old, like 1909. Yeah, 1909. So if I ever get a price really good on books, and they're that old, I'll try them. Uh, you probably already knew about this, but there is a market for old G.I. Joe, and this one happens to be a Sky Striker. It's not complete but the market on these is pretty good. And this says, where's the date on it? 1983, I have it flipped upside down, there it is. 1983 GI Joe. So I'm thinking that will get about 50 bucks at least. Someone who needs certain parts on it or just wants to display it on a shelf as is. This is a kind of a good name brand to know. Hillreich and Bradsby Co. Out of Louisville, made in USA. It's kind of got a, a marketing jack-in-the-box on it. But it's vintage, and some of these bats, holy crap, guys. These bats are selling upwards to like $6,000 if you get certain ones. This one, unfortunately, there's a selling person right now that has one for like 50, 60 bucks. So, oh, hell, I'll put mine up for 50 bucks too and ship it the same way I shipped that ruler in one of those um, like cardboard tubes. It's a tri-fold, it looks like a triangle. You get them for free at the USPS. Now these are vintage posters and I will show you each one real quick. I'll kind of spread out each one, but do not ignore old posters because there is some that are really rare. Especially if you get ones that are like old concert photos, uh, posters, um, uh, big bands, etc., etc. So I'll show you why I got them. Each one I left some behind that were I just didn't think that they were really good. But these are the ones that I picked up because they should bring. Even if each one gets me twenty dollars, I mean you do the math. Look at how many I got. 
All right, so let me uh, stop it here and I'll show up each poster and hopefully there's some really good comps on it. All right, so here's the first one. This is a uh, vintage from 1998 Highlander poster. So I figured I'd include this with my Highlander lot of VHS tapes. There might be some others. So this will be part of the lot. Any vintage Garfield fans? This is an old school poster from 1978. Wow. So I'm thinking somebody that collects Garfield is gonna love this thing. Here is another vintage Highlander poster. This one's from 1997. Pretty cool. Here's a vintage NASA poster from 1989 Space Week. It's kind of got a metallic sheen, like, it's pretty neat. Here's a vintage NASA poster from 1989 Space Week. It's kind of got a metallic sheen, like, it's pretty neat. As you know, there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there. And this is a vintage track from 1992. All I need to know I'm from Star Trek, and it's got a bunch of sayings, I guess, that's relevant to them. So someone who's a Trekkie is gonna love that poster. I have no idea what year this one is. I have no idea what year this one is, but it's vintage, I'm sure, because all the other ones were, and maybe this could be a highly collectible one. I'm not sure. Now this one was literally still pinned up on their wall when I walked in on the sale. And I got up on a ladder and I took it off since I was buying all the other ones. My math was if he liked this one so much that he was displaying it in his house, maybe it was rare or highly sought after. So I took it. It's not dated that old. It's 1992 it looks like. It's still, maybe it's rare, I don't know. Another NASA older vintage poster here's a vintage 1988 olympics seoul korea and i don't know if that makes it special that it's olympic committee but 1983 i don't know printed I'm not sure this could be rare though another vintage korea olympics poster fairly large i'll probably sell this one with the other one i showed you I believe this is like a candid shot of the main actor of Highlander. So I will sell this with the Highlander posters and all the VHSs together. Another large Highlander poster goes with the others. I'll sell as a lot. Another old Garfield poster. This one is from 1978. Halloween also. That should be a good one. Now there's no date on this one, but it's a big poster and I do know that old school Bruania or Bruaria, whatever it's called, people collect, like there's tobacco collectors, there's beer and alcohol collectors out there. So someone will buy this just to frame it that likes Coors or Coors Light, it's huge. Another vintage Highlander poster goes with the lot. I know that there's collectors out there for vintage electronics, vintage computers type thing, and this is in really good shape. Pentium Pro processor, like a poster. So my guess is someone will frame this and put into their either lab or computer room or whatever. I thought this was pretty cool. This was a vintage Carlsbad cavern, and it kind of shows everything, like diagram. But it's, look at it, it's from 19... 79 so I'm thinking someone will frame that and put it somewhere and finally here's the last one this is printed on like clear plastic and it was kind of weird I have, I have to look this up Pat Flanagan experimental sensor and then you look down here and it has the date energy poster Whatever, Pat Fanagan energy poster of 1976. So 
who knows? Maybe this is a highly collectible one. I'll have to look it up. All right, so that was about it. Hopefully, y'all got some pretty good items to keep your eye out for. And I'm at like 7% battery, so I want to make sure I did an outro to the video and said thanks again for watching. Till next time, see y'all later. Peace. Here's Zoe, the Barnumania mascot. Go get it. Sure All right, tug of war. Tug of war. Get it. Go. Compared to this morning, and then really as we transition to the next day, and we